You are listening to another Always Moto production. The Always Moto Podcast with your host, David Hogan. This show contains information about injuries to riders competing in AMA Supercross, AMA Motocross, MXGP, Ozpro MX, and other international moto events. The information discussed may be unsettling to some listeners. It might be incomplete or based on medical opinions due to riders tending to hide the details of their injuries. We are here to explain the information and increase injury understanding and visibility for the fans. There might be coarse language and the odd stuff up along the way. If any of this offends you, turn us off right now. That's right, Moto fans, I'm not a doctor, but I am a physiotherapist, and this is the Always Moto podcast. We are at episode 17. I'm David Hogan, the Australian physiotherapist. Welcome to the emergency department where we review the injuries that are going around for the Supercross, Motocross, MXGP, Ozpro, MX, which is about to start this weekend. Uh, We'll start dropping in a few more areas of um, injuries from different uh, series coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, But for now, this episode will just focus on the AMA Monster Energy Supercross and the injuries that have been happening in that series. We've just had round 11 at Indianapolis. We're heading for round 12 at Seattle. Uh, it's going to be an outdoor stadium this weekend, so weather is a potential factor for this round. Finally, we've had pretty much perfect weather on track uh, these first 12, uh, first 11 rounds that we've had so far in Monster Energy Supercross. So it should be finally time for something to change weather-wise. Give the guys at the, uh, the Dirtworks track crew something to prepare for. Maybe get those tarps back out and cover the tracks up. Change the day plan out a little bit. We'll see how that all works out. Indy is done. Lots more injuries that have been added to that list uh, with all those ruts that were there last week. So we've got a bit to talk about. So what's on episode 17? Obviously, the updated injury list is coming your way. We'll talk through that list from Indy uh, and the guys that are coming back for this weekend at Seattle, which mm, probably ain't know that many. Um, and with obviously, with the following week being a week off, people are taking that chance to extend that recovery period out just a little bit longer and be a bit better off. We're going to have a bit more concussion discussion. I love that little com- combined word play that I've got going there for this. So more concussion discussion. We're going to have the Always Motor Fantasy League talk, and later in the episode, we're going to have an interview. We've got the number 85 from Team PRMX. It's Hunter Sales. He's joined us this week to talk about his numerous broken ribs from a crash at Detroit um, a couple weeks ago. So looking forward to giving you guys that interview. It was a good chat with uh, Hunter. He's doing pretty well, and it's nice to have him on the uh, Always Motor podcast. So let's jump into that injury list, shall we? Now, I've got a couple of things to mention straight off the top. Uh, if For those of you guys that read my articles and listen to this podcast, I'd mentioned last week, um, so my articles are on fullnoise.com.au. Um, I mentioned in those that Max Volan was possibly going to be returning last week at Indy, and all, all information was heading that direction, but for whatever reason... There was nothing of Max Volan at Indy this this past week, um, and and it's kind of not surprising if I'm honest. Like when I talk about when I just spoke about the fact that there's a week off next week, and that this round this week is actually a West Coast round, which he wouldn't be a part of. Why wouldn't you take the extra? What it would work out to be three weeks that he would be not on track for. Why wouldn't you take that off and have that injury fully recovered and repaired? And look, use this whole time to be ready for, have the bike tested, ready for everything for outdoors even. Uh, and then you can come back. You still get, he's still going to get, I think, three three rounds for the East Coast, I believe it would be, um, that he would still cover off. 
in Supercross, and that would be a reasonable amount for him. So there's still plenty of time for him. So yeah, there was, there was no real rush for Max Volan to return last week, which I was quite surprised because that was going to be right on that four week mark. And even with the incomplete fracture to his collarbone that he that he had reported as the injury. It's still a fracture, and that bone is still fragile, and and it's still at least four weeks for that to be fully healed. Uh, And it's not something they would have operated on the plate and then be stable with from that side of things. It was already stable in itself. It just had some, you know, cracking through the bone. Uh, So, you know, one bump, that thing turns into a complete fracture. Why not just give it that little bit of extra time? It will be fully prepared fully healed, fully prepared, ready to race by this time that he comes around when the next round for the East Coast kicks in the swing, which that won't be until, I believe it's Atlanta, is the which is um, April 16 after after the break. Um, you know, So he's got plenty of time there. It's a couple more weeks. Like I said, it's at least three weeks that he's going to be able to add to that recovery time before he has to really do anything. And look, if he's ready to ride right now, fantastic. Use that time, like I said, to prepare for outdoors. Get everything ready on the bike. Um, you know, get yourself back up to speed. Why not use the time? Basically, is what I'm saying here. You know, these guys rush back to back to the races in a lot of cases well before they should be there, uh, and their results aren't always fantastic when that happens. Sometimes they surprise you and they can, you know, kill it. Um, most of the time, they're sort of mediocre because they can't push. They don't have that same fitness. They fade at the end of the events. Why not give yourself the break when you've got the chance to use it to your advantage? And I think that's something that uh, Max Anstey is currently doing. He's been back on the bike now for about a week and a half to two. um, And he's just going to use this extra week this week um, and the break next week to give himself just that two weeks extra time before he's back at the supercross track again um so he'll be fully ready to go by the time he's back around he won't have any issues with his ribs his shoulder should be healed by this point uh he he um he'll be fighting fit basically ready to go um like he's back at you know a1 sort of status so it's it's useful don't rush back guys especially when you're not in the championship hunt. as soon as you miss a round you're not in a championship hunt these guys need to consider the health and their actual overalls, you know, right race readiness that they should be looking at before they jump into these things and potentially extend the injury recovery, which, you know, it might not be fully healed. So they're then just going to add a week or two or four onto their progress to get back to full fitness and that because they're sort of just teetering on the edge of it being still painful and whatnot. And they, they can potentially extend that uh, recovery period, which is not what you're trying to do in, in the big scheme of things. So, look, good good play by Max Follen. On the similar line, so Max Ansey doing that, yes, too. We already talked to him. Dylan Ferrandis. Now, Dylan has that bone bruise in his wrist from uh, Detroit. And, the, and I said initially that I thought that he would at least sit out until after the break uh which would put him again back at uh st louis um which would be you know following this break here now there's talk that and i thought this as well there's talk that he won't be back at all in supercross and it would make complete sense to me if you have an injury and you are the defending champ in the outdoor series, and you get a knock midway through the Supercross series, and you're not doing all that well. Let's be honest, Dylan hasn't had great Supercross results in 2022. He starts a shit house. He's uh, yes, he's riding well, he's riding fast, and he's passing guys, but his results are so bad because he starts as so shit. Um, Wouldn't you take, and if you have this knock, wouldn't you take every chance you had to be fully fit for the series where you're going to get chances for win bonuses and championship bonuses? To me, that makes financial sense. Don't race back. Don't rush back to be at the track and get shit results in Supercross to then potentially risk a further injury um, or further aggravation to your wrist um, that then prevents you from riding to your full capacity when the outdoors rolls around in a couple of weeks' time. We're getting to that point where the injuries that are happening now are going to really impact the beginning of your outdoor season and potentially delay your outdoor season start. You might not be able to make it to the first two, three, four rounds because of something that happens now. So you've got to be paying attention with all these riders over the next few weeks. These guys, especially once we go past this break next week, those last sort of four rounds of the Supercross series, which, what do we have? We'll have St. Louis, Atlanta, Foxborough, Denver, Salt Lake. Sorry, five rounds that we'll have after the break. 
you watch the guys in those five weeks, there will be a very much a noticeable step down in some of their intensities where they are focusing on not getting injured, not hitting the deck, and that way they are then fully fit and healthy for the start of the outdoors because they can see that they're a contender again in that series when it starts when everybody goes back to zero. The way the championship's sitting at the moment for most of these series, um, things are looking pretty safe for the guy on top without any, you know, if, unless something severe happens, but they're pretty safe. And those other positions in the middle, you're not really getting paid all that much for those, you know, second through tenths and stuff like that in terms of a championship outcome. So the focus is going to start shifting again for all of these guys to that outdoor prep and out being fit for outdoors. So you're going to see a bit of a, some of these guys just taking it a little bit easier, I would say, on the, on the Supercross side of things to make sure they make it to the outdoors fit and healthy. And that's not a bad thing. And I think Dylan Fernandez will be a prime example of that. I don't think, I'm going to say it here, I don't think we see him in Supercross again. If I do, if we do, I'll be surprised because uh, the 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 potential financial gain for him in the outdoors, if he wins a couple of rounds, he wins the championship, it's massive compared to what he's going to get from those couple of rounds he's going to do in Supercross now because um, I don't think he's going to pull any any great result coming back where he is right now with a bit of a bum wrist. And yes, the field's depleted, but he still gets shit starts. So I think it's better for him to be out and sit out and be fully rested and fully prepared for outdoors. All right, let's jump through the rest of this list here, guys. Um, so Justin Brayton. Uh, concussion at Indy. Uh, he's supposedly passed his concussion protocols at this stage, uh, but he's decided that it's in his interest to use this week break that's coming up after this round um, to just make sure everything's right for him. Now, obviously, again, Justin is a guy, he's an older guy, so his recovery is potentially a little bit, bit, bit delayed, but he's also a bit smarter in the sense that he can see that his, his results for one round is not going to make or break him. Uh, and taking that extra two weeks of, of rest period is going to be super financial, uh, super beneficial for him in the long run. And if he does, does come back in those at that St. Louis round, like he's indicating, the potential for him to be fully fit and healthy at that stage and get a good result is much improved because of this depleted field. So good work, Justin. I, I like the uh, smart approach you've taken to your health there and, the, and recovering from the concussion fully. Um, complete respect there. And look, just sit on the couch, enjoy the race on the TV, mate, for the week and, and, and enjoy the weekend off um, and then come back fighting for those last few rounds. Shane McElrath, number 12 on the Rocky Mountain KT, KTM. Uh, he also had a bit of a head knock and a knee injury at Indy. Um, he's out for this weekend, also going to use the break to his advantage. Um, there's, it's unclear as to what he's actually done to his knee. He hasn't updated everybody on scans as such for that side of things. So we think it's just purely the concussion side of things and the knee a little bit that he's just taken the chance to be out for the weekend. And look, that's then led to uh, the Rocky Mountain ATV KTM team to basically have no riders this weekend. So Max Anstey's taken that extra week to be fit and ready for St. Louis. McElrath is going to be out. Um, and who else is out? Oh, Joey Savacci's been out for obviously a few weeks now with that ACL tear from way back towards the beginning of the season. So the Rocky Mountain truck might not need to make the trek to Seattle. They tried to set by the sounds of it, help a few guys out um, for a fill-in ride for this weekend, but nobody's taken them up on the option for that one-off, one you know, one-week ride basically, which I can understand. It'd be pretty tough to jump on a bike for one, what you jump on it maybe twice, three times this week. You know, if you got if you're lucky, and then go and race it, it'd be pretty difficult to pull off. Particularly if you've got some other sponsors that are already supporting you, and you've got to say, "Ah, oh, don't worry about this weekend." That'd be that'd be hard to do. So, look, there might be no Rocky Mountain truck this week. Um, they'll be back for should have two of their guys back ready to go for St. Louis when the break after the break. Styles Robertson, number fifty on the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna. Um, just before Indy, he's popped up a po photo of his wrist in a brace. Uh, seems he's had a bit of an issue midweek uh, and possibly some uh, damage done to that wrist, which is a bit of a bummer. He's a bit of a he's had a few injury dramas, uh, old Styles, and I say old, but he's only really young, but. Um, Styles has had some issues before the season. It sounds like he had a bit of a pelvic issue. Um, he's also had issues last year with his knee. 
Um, he's just yeah not having a good run with the injury side of things, particularly for a you know a fairly new guy to the pro scene. He's his rookie, you know, only second year out, I think it is now. So he's he's having a bit of an injury plagued start to his career. Hopefully he can get this figured out. Hopefully it's only minor and he can have everything sorted. But I suspect he won't be. We won't be seeing him at any more Supercross this year. If anything, he'll just be getting prepared, like a lot of guys at this stage with injuries. They'll just be getting prepared and focused on outdoors. TJ Albright, number 116 on a privateer Kawasaki. Unfortunately, in the qualifyings uh, at Indy, broke his wrist. He's said to us this week when we've chatted with him briefly that he's hoping to be back in four weeks because his hometown race is Foxborough. And he's looking to be on the track then, which will be fairly tight in time frames for him. He might be in a bit of pain still at that point. Hopefully the bone itself is actually healed enough by that point for him to be on track and at least give it a crack because that would be pretty cool uh, to be there for your hometown race. It'd suck if you had to miss it by a week or so just to just because the injury wasn't quite ready. But you'll have to see how that goes. The time frame for that is going to be extremely tight. Like a, a small bone is a four to six week recovery time frame. Four if you're really good and quick. Six for the, is the average. Um, but depending on which bone and if there's multiple aspects to it um, in the wrist there, it, it might be that four weeks. It might be a bit longer. So we'll have to see how he goes. Preston Kilroy, um, number 68 in the Barak Suzuki. He only came back this week for India after his concussion from Arlington. Uh, and it didn't last very long. <laughs> he basically, in one of the qualifying or practices, I can't recall which one, uh, he has managed to break his femur and have a pelvis issue as well. So he's got multiple broken bones there, but the big one obviously being that femur fracture. Now, this is the first femur fracture injury uh, for 2022 that we've got recorded. Normally, we sort of have around that two or so um, in, a, in a season, in a, you know, in a series. Uh, so this is the first one for this year, which is good. Um, it's a pretty significant injury. Um, and it usually requires about a five to six month recovery time frame. It's the biggest bone in your body for and that means that it takes a long time to heal it also requires surgical intervention it's basically a mandatory surgery you have to have a pin inserted in the femur to allow it to be stable uh, and to allow it to not uh re, you know basically when you when the bone heals you don't want it to obviously do it in an at an angled position or a rotated position because then it's going to create your leg to have a funny alignment so the the rod is allowing the bone to heal in a straight line or in its natural position all right so that's why you have to have surgery for this one there's no way around it uh, particularly with all the bone marrow production that occurs in your femur it's important for the rest of your health in terms of red blood cells production all that sort of stuff for your general health comes from that that bone um, so it's super important that it recovers well and this one's not rushed and like i said it's a five to six month injury so at best, we're going to not see him until about middle of the outdoors, which puts it at about red bud in July. So it's going to be a while for Preston, unfortunately. Um, big injury there. A uh, bit of a continuation on from Jerry Robin. He's continued to aggravate that AC joint. Um, and like I've spoken about in some other posts on Instagram and Twitter when he's popped some things up, the pictures that he's put up of that AC joint, that thing is sitting severely high. Uh, it can't just be the acromiocavicular ligament that holds it down into that one that he's torn. There are two underneath that come up from your coracoid, which is a little hook off your shoulder blade on the inside. Uh, there are two different ligaments that come up in that area under, to the underside of the collarbone to help hold it down. Those then make grade four, fives, and sixes into the of the severity of an AC joint sprain. He's got to have included some of those now. It's gotten really high. Um, he's gone off for some specialist reviews. I doubt we see him for the rest of Supercross. Things just haven't gone well since that injury occurred and then been re-aggravated. At best, if they don't do surgery, at best we see him in outdoors at the beginning. If they do need to do surgery, again, he might be somebody that is like halfway through the outdoors that we start to see him back. We'll have to see what the uh, intervention needs to be for Jerry at that stage before we can really comment on when he will be back on track. 
Uh, last one from Indy uh, is Brock Pappy. It's the privateer on a Kawasaki. He's number 247. Uh, he's managed to fracture a collarbone, which is pretty easy to do, unfortunately. You just fall on that shoulder or your arm hanging out there and pop, off she goes. It's the uh, sacrificial bone in the body. It's the most easy one to break. Uh, and look, for these guys, this is not uncommon. There's plenty of collarbone fractures every year. Um, a lot of these pro riders, if you ask them, they will have either broken it or they've broken it and they've got a plate currently in there um, to have it repaired. So if he doesn't get a surgery, it's a four to six week recovery. He's already listed that he is not going to return for Supercross. He's obviously going to use the time to recover properly. i um, not sure if he's planning to do any outdoors or not, but he would be ready in time for that if everything goes to plan at this stage. All right, guys, that's the injury list so far. Now, uh, ready, for, ready for Seattle. So hopefully these guys can keep things together and we can sort of, you know, the list has been massive. Like when I'm putting together my article and listing out these uh, injuries, I'm up to like, I think it's 11 or 12 pages as I'm typing these things out of injuries that I've got the spread of the of the article going over. It's ridiculous this year. Uh, and, and overall, like if I jump quickly over on my spreadsheet that I keep track of all these injuries on, normally when I've set up each year's spreadsheet, I sort of go to about 100 rows on the spreadsheet. I'm already at 118. Uh, which is ridiculous. I've had to extend it, and we still have, what do we count? Six rounds to go. We've got the five after the break, and Seattle. Yeah, six rounds to go. It's insane. We we could crack 150 potentially injuries in one Supercross season, which would be just nuts. Uh, and and look, if we go on the specifics, uh, onto a specific topic now, the concussion discussion. Well, we're already at 13 concussions in 2022 and we've still got six rounds to go. In 2021, we only had 10. That's insane. We're up to 13 already. We had four or five, what was it? Four or five at Arlington alone. We had five alone in Arlington. That was insane that weekend. Everybody seemed to be knocking themselves out at Arlington. Must have been something about the dirt or something over there. I don't know. But on the concussion discussion... We've, we've got some information. We, I thought I'd just spell out a little bit further for you guys what's involved in this concussion protocol uh, and the AMA Return to Ride program. Now, a lot of you probably will have heard by now that there is a computer program called the Impact Test that is done as a baseline score for these guys before the season. They do that test when they're fully fit and healthy. Um, and that usually it's got to be done every two years and before the season starts um, so that they've got a baseline. So that if you have a concussion during the season, you then have to redo this comp, um, impact test on the computer. And if you're not within a certain percentage, they deem you as not fit for racing. Um, and that's, what they, that's how they test if you're also ready to come back to racing as well. That's the final check off um, before you're allowed back on track for a race day. But the return to ride program is an interesting one. It's a minimum five step process and each one of those steps requires 24 hours to complete minimum. Um, and so far, if anyone listened to Justin Brayton's interview over on Pulp MX, he actually went through it quite well in terms of giving you guys a bit of insight. Um, it was on the Pulp MX show um, that he was talking about that because he obviously he's in that protocol right now. Now, he's actually gone through it really well this 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 time uh, and cleared, but he's also taken the, made the decision himself to sit out and just give himself some extra time to recover, which is great. So those stages, the first stage, and these are supervised sessions. Uh, it's just a light gym workout where they have super, somebody supervises the session. They ask you questions throughout um, and make sure that there's no concussion symptoms that are rearing rearing their head you know there's no dizziness there's no headaches there's no um, nausea there's no double vision those sorts of things they're checking off to make sure that that's not happening now the supervision could be if you're close enough and local enough to wherever these guys are they'd be in person but for a lot of these guys these riders um, they're on the road traveling between events it will be a facetime or like a zoom call that they'd do this over on stage two, they're allowed to do like a spin bike and a road cycle. Um, again, somewhat supervised in that sense where they're getting some things checked off after the session. 
Stage three is basically a normal off-bike training session. So that's your gym, that's your road bike. Um, you're allowed to elevate your heart rate to a sort of a more normal level at that point for exercise. Stage four requires a, a, a light on-bike session and stage five also is an on-bike session. Now, they need you to do each of those stages without regression, without symptom provocation before you're allowed to be cleared out of each one and onto the last one. Uh, last stage which is then doing that impact test again at the track the morning of before that next race that you're attending now the part that i would like to see in all of this is that this stage program is fantastic but i think i'd like there to be a minimum that this goes over to a seven day program rather than five and the reason i say that is across all other sort of sports your footballs your nfls um, over in australia our afl our nrl they have these processes where there is a minimum if you because and again they go on a week to week schedule much like supercross right um so they have a minimum thing that if you have a concussion recorded you have to have a minimum one week one game absence which essentially is a one week absence from the from the from the sport right um and i think i would like to see something like that just to give the health of these guys a little bit more positive view towards in you know, maintaining their health, not just now, but for their future health. Uh, and, and obviously a lot of people understand that there's been talk over the last few years about how these concussions build up over time and then have impact on your health later in life. Uh, and so that's where this this sort of stretching of that minimum time frame over from five days over to seven is something that I think would be a bit beneficial. And a reason I want to do that is not because I want to take guys out of the racing. I don't want anybody to miss a race. But from a health point of view, it's a sensible idea. As well as if you've missed, if you've crashed in a race and got a concussion, more than likely you got last, right? Or very close to last. So you got 22nd, 21st, 20th, something like that. You got one, maybe two points if you're lucky for that race. You're pretty much out of that season, right? If you're a championship contender, normally that championship's gone. There's no way you're getting back 25 points. If you do, you're James Stewart. That's basically all there is to it. Um, or unless the other guys have similar problems, right? But see, then it's always a level playing field. If you're doing the same thing across the board, any recorded head knock that's re- that, that classes into that concussion would then have the same process having for everybody. So, you know, there might be multiple times where people each rider has one race missed because they had a concussion or something along those lines. But I think it's just a smart move and it's something that I'd like to see somebody bring up and discuss a bit further at a point with the AMA and that that could, uh, you know, get some impact on this, which, you know, is something that my little podcast here and there is not going to do just yet. I don't have that sort of pull, but maybe one day I'll be getting in that position where I can actually, um, you know, put some influence onto some people about these things and, and you know, instigate a, a worthwhile change. All right, I think that's probably enough concussion discussion. It's something that we've brought up every week lately because there's so many that's been happening this this season. Like I said, 13 in 2022 already. It's been a nuts season from that side of things uh, for, for concussions. All right, next topic on the Always Moto podcast. We're going to jump into the fantasy talk. Um, now, finally had a bit of a decent round. Eh? <laughs> uh, Indianapolis, uh, the results. I managed to pull sixth in the championship league. This In, in the, uh, not championship league, in the Always Moto Fantasy League. Championship league, I was probably <laughs> 6,000 or something. Uh, but uh, just a little rib here. I gave it to TJ finally from Moto X Pod Show. I beat him by one position. It only takes two points to beat him, but yeah, I got there. Uh, but the winner for the round was MX Goat. Um, I don't know how you got 300, 306, mate, but that's an insane score for the round. You cleared us all by 48 points. Scrub and MBW was 48 points back in second for the one round. Ben Grinley was in third. He's Grinno 2022. Uh, 22. Uh, he was third. Nice work, mate. Um, and then we've got a few other um, notables. Oh, Clinton from uh, three laps down. Our stats man who's on NBC um, helping the stats, the broadcast team out. He was in 14th. Um, where else have we got? Ooh, we've had a few guys miss a few rounds here. You guys really need to use the mulligans. So that was Aaron from Full Noise. Um, get to the chopper. That's Nath from Goat Brand, who Goat Brand is our first place prize provider for those knee brace socks. 
Um, and then we've had a shocking round for Pup275. That's our man who's from False Neutral Industries who's providing the prizes for second and third. Now, don't forget, guys, the, the rules are for these prize winners. You've got to be following all three accounts. It's always Moto, it's Goat Brand MX, and it's False Neutral Industries. You need to be following those to be in the, in the, in the comp and winning the prizes at the end of the season. So who's leading the series overall? Let's have a look here. Let's just change this screen here. And, yeah, it's MX Goat. No surprises there. He's been up front for a while now. Um, scrubbing MBW's in second. He is, uh, what's that, 13 points down. And then we go to GMC 230. He's in third. So look, first and second's tight. There's a decent gap down the, the, to third and fourth. And look, TJ's hanging there in fourth. He's trying to get uh, in the third for that prize. Uh, and then look, between from fourth down to fifth, there's a bit of a decent gap. But none of these gaps are unassailable. Maybe the first two are because those guys seem to be killing it every round. Um, but look, for myself, I'm in 14th. I'd like to cruise that myself just a little bit further towards the 10. That'd be fantastic. Um, and then, yeah, we'll see how we go. But look, it's great, great bit of fun. I've been enjoying the banter, guys. Um, keep ribbing me when I get a shit round. I love it. Um, but I also re realize I'm going to give it back when I beat you guys too. So <laughs> hang in there, guys. It's a bit of fun. Few, few more rounds to go. So uh, for this round, um, I'll give you the insight so far. I've had a look on, on my teams and picked out my, my runs for this week. Now, 250 West kicked back in. I've picked Hunter Lawrence as my all-star. I've got Dominic Thurry, uh, and I've got Ryan Surratt and Caden Amarine. Uh, and then in the 450 team, I've gone Marvin Muscan for my all-star. I've gone Cade Clayson, Justin Starling, and Logan Carnell. Have to go Logan Carnell after his LCQ win, and why not talk about the OnlyFans chick on there as well? Uh, was it the the Hannah Ray or something like that? Well done to her for sponsoring a bloke that was in need. Thank you for that. Uh, but yeah, so that's my team. So we'll see what happens when we get the qualifying happen. Um, if whether that stays the same last week, I think I made about 20 changes in the morning before, um, the race started on the Sunday morning, our time. Um, and I just couldn't decide, but I made a reasonable pick in the end, but it's so hard at the, this point with all these, uh, fringe privateer guys that could make the main, but might not make the main, but do make the main. You just don't know which one to pick because you're trying to pick high handicaps, but it's just, you don't want to miss, like they say, eight is great. You don't want to miss one. Um, so, yeah, just keep an eye on those qualifying times, guys. And the ones that are missing the pick that their picks for the round, buy the mulligans, guys. They've got mulligans where the team will automatically pick for you if you don't enter anything. Do it. It's only like 15 bucks, and it saves your ass. But, yes, thank you again to Goat Brand MX for that first place prize of those knee brace socks and to False Neutral Industries for the hat and the sunnies for the second and third place prize. Appreciate you guys coming on board. Hopefully, we can get you guys on for uh, MX, uh, the MX series, which will start in late May as well. All right, guys, I think that's enough chat on all these sorts of things. We're going to head into our interview now. We've got... The number 85 from Team PRMX, it's Hunter Sales. He's going to talk to us about his rib injuries. So listen up, guys. Hang around. Ch listen to the interview. Um, you might hear a few things about how he's gone uh, with this injury and what he's gone through there. Um, and then we'll be back after that. All right, guys and girls, now on the Always Moto podcast, we've got another interview coming your way. Uh, we've got a rider who's had a rough couple of days uh, since a press day back at Detroit. Uh, it's Hunter Sales. He's number 85 on the Partzilla Team PRMX. Uh, he's joining us now. Um, welcome on board, Hunter. Thanks for your time, mate. Yeah. Hey, how are you guys doing? Um, doing all right? Yeah, it's. A, I, I said this last time when I was uh, last interview I did with one of the other guys. Um, the, that how's it going? Question is a bit loaded for you guys. It's always a, a rough time that we're usually talking to you at. So yeah, it's not always that. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm feeling good. Sort of comment. Yeah, for sure. Um, I actually got my mom's actually from England, so that's like, she did she, like it just comes out differently with you guys, I guess. Like, <laughs> it's just I don't know. <laughs> It's that language barrier as much as it's english it's a, it's, it's a whatever yeah it's better, always different yeah similar but what whatever yeah yeah 
so how's it been mate like obviously the the crash on press day things didn't go well from there and it's been what 10 or so days it's probably been a a rough little time for you yeah i mean it was yeah just a a brutal a brutal time in in my life right now i guess you'd call it from uh how i was feeling feeling that day on the bike so yeah bummer it never seems to um come when you're feeling crappy on the bike usually you start feeling really good you get a good flow going and then yeah just out of the blue you're on the deck and and you know out for a period of time it seems to be how it goes yeah literally me and all the boys talk about that all the time it's like when you're feeling invincible like that and then catch yourself feeling like that and a snap of your fingertips you're on the ground man trying to catch your catch your breath and all that yeah in your case literally i bet you didn't have much air in those lungs at that point man it was scary um you know i've had the wind knocked out of me plenty of times but when it doesn't come back you you just you almost you freak out You know, you don't, you can't breathe and all that stuff. And I just kind of remember telling myself, like, you need to relax. You need to just breathe and just, you know, yeah, don't freak out. And uh, I I did just that, but still just hectic. So let's quickly, let's run through what happened. So how did you actually crash and and, and what happened in that few few moments there of of the day? Um. Yeah, so we were on our last session press. And, um, yeah, we were just all kind of talking about the line right after the finish line. It was that, uh, you could jump into that dragon's back and then jump over it and then three, three into the corner. Yep. So, uh, there was a couple of, uh, better guys doing it. And, um, my boss Julian was telling me about it. And so I went and scoped it out and, uh, I hit it, buttered it, like made it perfect three or four times and. One time I came up short on the getting over the dragon's back. Yeah. And it was such like a, so when you went over that dragon's back, like that dragon's back, the last one was pretty high compared to the lip of the next jump. And it, so the transition felt a lot quicker. Like you, you had to get on the, on the other side of that dragon's back. Perfect. Yeah. And I clipped it and just, I couldn't get to my brakes soon enough. So I basically went, like skimmed, the first one or the, the, the three jump out and it was a three foot, five foot, three foot jump. So Mm -hmm. then like I clipped the five foot middle one and it spit my bike to the right. And like, I just, it just, I bailed. Like it, I wasn't even expecting it to, I really don't know what happened in that point. It happened so quick yeah and literally just probably came down from 10 feet straight onto my my left side right on my ribs and um mm. yeah that was that was it from there <laughs> that's where the breathlessness comes into it so yeah <laughs> so straight on the left yeah. side um i gather you 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 know gasping for air for a couple of minutes there what what did the uh outpoint star crew and stuff did they do anything for you then and there or they just have to let you sort of try and work the air back into you um well, I knew like something like wasn't right because when I landed, like, you know, I was trying to get my wind back and like, I felt like my mouth was watering and I went to go like, like put it on the ground and I just I see it was all blood. Oh, nice. So yep. then like I kind of, you know, kind of just, well, I was like, whoa, like something's wrong. Mm-hmm. And then my ribs were literally just like tick, 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 tick. Anytime I moved, like they were just mm. grabbing each other. But the uh the asterisk medical group wasn't there they're not there on uh the fridays they're only there oh, on saturdays okay yeah yeah so what what sort of medical stuff do they have in place then on press day for you guys so they just had uh, a couple of people from the hospital i guess and yeah. an ambulance there i mean luckily they had an ambulance there really but um yeah that was that was all that was but um they uh they didn't give they didn't do anything th- we just they just got me on the stretcher and hauled me out like they were kind of in a in a panic mode like more of a panic mode than i was almost yeah right probably probably because of the amount of blood maybe you're spitting up they thought there was something a bit more serious than just the lung puncture going on there too so exactly yeah so um i mean they they were super good as well 
So um, can't complain. No, that's good. So, so in the end, it ends up being eight broken ribs and a punctured lung. Now, are those eight ribs all individual rib fractures or did you break like one rib in multiple places? I believe just every one was broke um, in it. And it's, I would say not like a couple of breaks. I, they didn't tell me actually, like okay. they told me ribs. So I'm guessing just eight yeah. ribs. And then they ended up, pl- they plated six of those eight ribs. No, yeah. Okay, nice. That's a lot, that's a lot of plating. Like when you, um, when you break like one or two ribs, usually it's, you know, just, yep, thanks for coming, see you later. But obviously at that point of the number that you broke, because like there's 12 ribs on one side of your rib cage and you've broken eight. So you're pretty much all the way there. Obviously the st- stability there is not going to happen for you. And yeah, it'd be quite painful for you during the recovery, which it probably already is, which we'll get to in a sec, but yeah, so surgery went all right, I gather, for you. Yeah, um, it went all right. Thank, thank goodness, because like they were, I was really nervous because when I got there, I was in the emergency room. So I got there at about nine o'clock, and um, it was hectic. Like there was, I mean, you're you're down down Detroit. <laughs> so I mean, there's, there's just you know, people everywhere, you know, all, all shapes and sizes, whatever, you you know what I'm talking about. Yep, so, yep. um, just kind of, it, it made me kind of nervous. And then, um, the doctor was telling me this is like some sort of rare surgery that they usually don't do. And luckily there's like one doctor here that knows how to do it, but they didn't have the right tools in the hospital. So they had to call someone for tools Making um, you feel super confident at this point, aren't they, by the sounds of that? So Yeah, exactly. So um and so I got there at nine. I didn't have my surgery till nine at night. Mm, okay. So I had to I had to sit there all day, no water, no drinks, and I just got off the track and like I was so thirsty. Yeah. And I just I couldn't have nothing. And I was just I was just kind of getting a little bit upset and it was just a long day. It was just a long day. But uh, other than that, the five hour surgery went smooth and uh, I'm feeling a little better each day, but still uh, pretty brutal pains at some points. Yeah. Well, I gather at least with that being plated now, like that clicking that you mentioned, obviously was when you're taking those breaths initially, is that stuff all stopped for you now? Like it's supported pretty well, I, I would imagine. It's supported well. Um, I still feel, I still feel clicking and stuff, and I'm just thinking it's got to be like one of the other two that they didn't oh, fix. True. But it's yep. just, it's whatever. Yeah, hopefully that will disappear. Like you, you got to be at least sort of three or four weeks for that sort of the bone to start, you know, really knitting together and the clicking stop. But yeah, I forgot, I forgot that part. You said six, didn't you? So you had still got two that are floating around there by themselves. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> So how's the actual lung like? Did it did it reinflate okay within the day or so afterwards? And have they got you blowing on the little tube trying to keep the ball up in the air, or what have they got you doing to try and keep that inflation of the lung happening? Yeah, they had that the whole mechanism that you were just talking about there. While uh, I have one at home too, but um, when I got out, I was more and more just trying to walk around and kind of get back to normal. But the yeah. lung um is pretty pretty messed up like to walk a couple steps like right in the morning or like right when i got out it, it's brutal like i'm out of wind uh-huh. like need to put it back in first gear and just slowly go <laughs> well, yeah just nice and not not too much effort it, obviously not getting much air in there at the moment so yeah it's not uh not so crash hot so what's uh, other than like rest is they have they got you let you do anything like are you trying to do any activity or have they other than like the you know if they got you trying to do some rib expanding exercises the breathing you know reinflate the lungs and keep that moving or, or what are you allowed to do um they said they said um exercise as tolerated yep so um honestly i got home then, I mean, I rested a little bit, but I, I, I acted like nothing was wrong. Like I got up when I needed to get up um, and stuff like that. And then I actually went to a snow cross race the other day. I saw that on your story. To... Oh. <laughs> yeah. So they, 
there was a lot of walking involved and that that really put me to the test but um sometimes you need to put yourself in those uncomfortable situations but yeah made it through the whole day was just pretty tired out at the end of it yeah well the, the cold air being at like you know in a snow snow area the cold air would have been a bit harder to um to take on the inside as you take the deep breath and that like the humidity so yeah that would have been interesting for you yeah it was actually like 60 degrees out so uh not not too bad okay yeah no that's all right uh, so what's uh have you got a plan for like you know trying to do some you know cycling or gym work or or even like what's the plan for the bike side of things you know usually you guys normally sort of start picturing out all right i'm going to be back on the bike by this point is, is that sort of coming to your mind yet at all um kind of just today to be honest um yep. i was riding around this little motor motorized scooter and like i could <laughs> handle like holding on to it and stuff so I was like, well, well, that's kind of cool. You know, I like getting on a road bike, you know, I'm putting a little bit more, more pressure on the, that rib area. So I was thinking like probably like a week, maybe two week, week two weeks, yep. I'd give it a go. I mean, so what, I'm just taking it how I feel and how the ribs feeling every day. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good thing. Don't rush, rush it. If you don't have to sort of thing, it's always, um, always the thing when we're like, I'm a physio. So when we're t talking to clients about their injuries and what they can and can't do, they always, you know, some of them give you the look in the eye, like I'm going to try that out right now. And you're like, just take it easy, you know, cru cruise through this. You'll get there in the end, but um, don't overdo it sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For, for with the dirt bike, they, I mean, they told me I'd be back like recovery time a month. But I was thinking to myself, like, what does a month mean? You know, like, do you know, like, like I'm an athlete or, you know, like going back to my normal, my normal thing is, you know, riding dirt bikes. So mm. I said to myself, you know, two months, maybe take, you know, take off the dirt bike and just kind of get my health back in order and make sure everything's good to go in there before I go risk anything because, I'm calling it a season supercross obviously and uh yeah. but I, i'm still trying to uh make outdoors and stuff but i won't be coming in until probably the third round so yeah well you by that i got time point, then yeah you got plenty of time by the sounds of it so like in that sense yeah you've got you've got ample time to get things right but like the whole the whole side of like when you're trying to actually do some of these activities and progress through to the next next step like you know go from like a road cycle to you know, even just to like a mountain bike. So it's the off road and then, you know, onto the bike, basically, if you can do the activity and you're not getting the pain and you're not getting short of breath and your heart rate isn't spiking, that's your signs, you know, like they're the, they're the basic things to say it's, it's progressing. You know, if you're, if you're getting halfway right. through a normal sort of ride that you would do easy as on any other day of the week and you, you, you're struggling, well, you're not ready, are you? So right yeah just go off how the body's feeling you know that's the i think that's more the smartest way to go yeah well and at least at least for you like with those couple of plates too in there that they're going to stabilize the majority of it yes we got two that we're talking about that weren't operated on but the stability side of things isn't a problem so it's now just down to the whether you can tolerate the pain and so long as you can get enough air in to make the body do the, you know, get the oxygen to the muscles so that you can do the activity the way you need to, it's, if you can manage the pain, the rest of it should be fine. So, Yeah. The biggest problem is the lung. Like the lung is like, it must've been a pretty good wound to it because yeah, it's not good at, at this point in time. I can really, I got a lot of work to do in that stage or in, in the lung area. Yeah. And, but like, it's, it's a bit different to the bones in the sense that it's a soft tissue. It gets plenty of blood flow. So once that wound, you know, heals up, which think of it like, you know, cutting a hole in your skin, like it's going to do the same sort of process. It's got to scab over. It's got to actually toughen back up. Like, you know, once it was, once a scab peels off, it's sort of pinkish there on the skin for a while until it gets a bit more strength in it. So, you know, a couple of weeks and it'll be, it'll be really strong. You'll notice that pretty quickly. Like you'll be able to take deep breaths and hold it and you'll be able to push yourself up a hill or something on a cycle bike, you know, like it'll get strong. But it's just, yeah, those first, first few weeks while that wound is fresh, you can pop it back open if you go too hard too soon. So. 
so, like if the lung thing was going to end up being longer than the whole rib, the whole rib getting back together and getting strong again. Uh, it should like, be about the same I, time. Eh? Yeah, I, I don't know. You know, I was just going to ask you what you thought of it. No, it'd be about the same time, man. Like really, and honestly, it, it's they, the fact that you've got multiple fractures would tell me that that's going to take longer. You know, like normally if you just have one bone fracture, it's that four to six week mark. But when, as soon as you go into multiples of, of bones being injured, it takes the body a bit more time to repair it all. But, and then obviously you throw in the lung, you've got like what, eight, nine things you're trying to repair all at once. So, but it'll be about the same time by that six week mark, eight week mark, you'll be good to go. So just a matter of um testing yourself out at those times and building it up but um i wouldn't jump straight into a into your outdoor training and trying to do you know two thirties or whatever on, on one day it might be um might be a couple of 15s for a while <laughs> yeah slowly slowly work our way up man <laughs> yeah but you've got time like outdoors is starting end of may this year isn't it or even later i can't remember the start date for the outdoors at this point but you've got plenty of time Right. Yeah. Like I said, I don't, I don't want to rush nothing and we'll get back into it when, when I, me and my body feels, feels that we can, you know? Yeah. And you're still going to be with the PRMX guys at that point? Um, there's, uh, there's some, I don't know which kind of outdoor series I'm doing yet at this point. Um, there was some talk about going over to Canada and doing that stuff, nice, but yep. at the same time, at the same time, I would do outdoors here too. Um, it don't really matter where I'm racing outdoors. I just want to race outdoors. Haven't been, uh, haven't been racing outdoors for the past couple of years, and I kind of want to get back to the roots. And more like, and more like, yeah, I love love racing outdoors, but um, more just to be in that much more better shape when Supercross rolls in, you know. It is one of those things that if you take that long period of time off, you lose that little bit of sharpness, you lose that fitness, you know, you don't, there's nothing like racing. So fitness is, uh, is, is key. And yeah, if you keep doing more, more of that sort of competitive high level stuff, it will just bring you around way better for when Supercross rolls around the next time, especially now, like if you didn't do any of that stuff too much now, like, you, you know, you're going to be ages before you actually get back on a Supercross track sort of thing. Yeah, um, exactly. But what was I just going to say? Uh, shoot, I forgot. <laughs> These things happen when you're uh, under pressure on an interview, mate. <laughs> yeah. So, um, no, but I would super uh, like outdoors kind of game, I guess you'd call it. Like, it, it with doing that will help in supercross with what i'm doing to get better in supercross and that oh yeah that's what i was gonna say and for every summer for the past like four summers um i've been more more on the work work grind than anything so i don't get to really ride as much as i like um and i do heavy machinery logging in the summer so like i'm missing a machine so i exercise is you're not getting exercise like we should. So this year, if I could be on a bike, um, you know, three days a week, every week coming into that, coming into, you know, preseason. Wow. I mean, if, if we can get there, it's going to be really cool to see the progression. Yeah. Your fitness would be way, way out of sight at that point compared to what it's been in the past by the sounds of it. Like there's nothing like riding. And if you're sitting in a machine, just, you know, moving the joysticks around, yeah, that's a big difference when you're actually on the bike three days a week. Yeah, and honestly, with the uh, with the whole ACL thing last year, and I was off for they told me they told me eight months, and I was off for nine months. So I I got back to riding only two months before the first race. So mm. like, not enough not enough time at all, and everything was rushed, and I wasn't up to par really. I mean, I, I kind of was, and then I had the I had the shoulder stuff happen to me and that kind of set me back. So yeah, you had a, a rough, rough start, seasons. wasn't it? Cause we, um, we had the, it wasn't the start of the season. You had some grazers or something that slowed you down too from, from starting. Yeah, I actually, uh, like three, three days before we were starting, we were going to head out to California. I crashed and tore my labrum or 
I like, I didn't do a full tear. I think it was just a little one, but yeah, it, yeah, it really banged me up. Mm. So hopefully has that settled down too then? Like, is it all resolved? You don't need to get anything sorted out with it while you got this downtime? Nope. Nope. Uh, when I got back to riding after the fact, when I actually took the time off that needed that I needed, uh, mm. I went back riding and I didn't even need the shoulder brace or anything. Like it's it's back to normal now. Yeah, from, nice. from what I'm feeling. Yeah, you obviously did some work in the gym or something at that point, and it's just resolved it. So that's good. And obviously, it was like I said, a small tear. So that's that's awesome. It's disappeared. But you guys always amaze me when you start talking about the injury that you've got at the moment. There's usually one or two behind it still that you're still been managing along the way to get through. You know, and race through these things. It's just insane how many things you guys have you know banged up around all this time from riding so um yeah you just gotta keep going if you can man it's all we, it's all we can do definitely so who's been helping you get to these races man have you got like the, the laundry list of like people helping you out that you want to do a shout out to uh yeah there's a couple locals local people and from back home and some some people i work for that 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 have been helping me out but other other than the team sponsors um anchuas motorsports they've been a the big help to me this year helping me out and then uh golf services from uh alabama they've been they've helped me out this year too with work and and sponsoring so i really appreciate those guys help and my dad i you know i really i wouldn't i wouldn't be where i was today without that guy behind me so yeah no, thank definitely. you families family is a big part of all this isn't it to get us to these races so yeah awesome so who's been uh looking after you who's been you've been ringing the bell i gather or something at home to try and get some help to get out of bed or whatever at times to, who's been helping you out at home at the moment oh shoot, i really haven't been home so my dad was kind of taking at the hospital he was he was staying there in detroit i mean luckily we had some uh some relatives that live in the area so he was staying at their house during the during the night and coming coming over in the morning and, and all he was hanging out but um after i got out we um it was like a seven hour ride home and i went to me and him went to go see my mom um we hung out with her for a little bit and uh ended up going back to wisconsin my dad basically helped me help me bathe up as much as we could (laughs) but other than that it's i've been i've been doing it all by myself Uh, that's that's uh, lucky i wasn't even i wasn't really today and um um, i headed over and i'm gonna travel out to seattle with him and just kind of you know enjoy the ride i guess you'd say (laughs) still try and keep up with it all eh? yeah man i don't want to slow down (laughs) that's good that's good now if you slow down man you'll you'll uh, just end up at the back of the field so don't don't (laughs) Uh, all all good man well look appreciate the time on the uh on the podcast today and glad you're doing all right and you know it's a pretty significant thing to have the wind knocked out of your one but to have that many ribs broken all at once is yeah it's it's not it's a difficult thing to deal with so we're glad you're up and about and seem to be managing and getting better day by day so it's a good thing to hear yeah thanks man it's been a a long 10 days but i'm just gonna keep putting one foot in front of the other and slowly get better till i can get back on the on the bike so awesome yeah no definitely look and hopefully hopefully that plan of the outdoors comes comes together for you and um yeah you can be fully fit and ready to go by the time that rolls around yeah, that's the plan. But uh, as we all know, as crossers, you you can't really plan. You know, stuff just happens, and you just gotta keep going with the flow. And whatever whatever life throws at you, you gotta work with. So, and that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, true. No, awesome. All right, man. Well, thanks for joining us on the Always Moto Podcast, and uh, we'll catch you at the next races sometime down the down the track. Absolutely. Thank you for the call. Thanks, mate. All right, guys and girls, we're back. Thanks for that interview with Hunter Sales there. Thanks for listening. Thanks for hanging around. 
It's the Always Moto Podcast. Um, look, we're going to wrap the show up now, but I've like a few things I want to check off with you guys. Uh, just a reminder, we've got some Always Moto t-shirts coming out very, very shortly. They're on order. They're on our way. They're probably on a boat lost at sea, but they're coming. I promise you, they're coming. Black t-shirts, Always Moto logo, big, bold, and front on the front shirt, front of the shirt. They're going to be $25 plus postage and handling. If you want one, get in quick. Send me a message on, on Instagram or on, through, via my email, and uh, we can place the order for you, and then we can get you the one of the first shirts to come out. Um, so feel free to hit me up. Uh, like I said, 25 bucks is pretty cheap for a t-shirt these days. Now, remember, guys, to stay up with, uh, to date with all the information, uh, the injuries on the day, especially for those updates for, like, fantasy on race day. You've got to be following us on the socials. Our Instagram is at always.moto. Uh, make sure you're following us there. Now, if you want to support the show, if you are a product or a or even just a fan, and you want to support us, so we can keep putting out this content, so, you know, any 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 uh, any financial support is welcome to try and help us cover these costs of subscriptions and whatnot to get this show on the road. Uh, if you want to support the show, email me alwaysmoto2019 at gmail.com. Remember to like and subscribe to the podcast. It's super important, guys. Uh, and if the, your podcast app lets you leave feedback on the podcast, please do that also. It All those algorithm bullshit, it helps us get going and get some more viewers and listeners. So please like and subscribe to the podcast. It would really be, it means a lot to me. Uh, and look, that's it, guys. Appreciate you hanging around right to the end. Remember to be smooth, be fast, because if you're not, I'll probably be seeing you in the emergency department.